Okay, so I'll confess, I'm sitting in a rocking chair and I'm going to do my dangdest not to rock because it makes some people sick. And, you know, Paul said, uh, if your brother's offended by your meat, you know, don't eat meat for his sake. Well, I have to sit in this rocking chair and not rock for the sake of those who, you know, they just can't take it. <laughs> no, I get it. I watched one of the videos where I was rocking and I was like, holy cow, that's, that is kind of hard to watch it the whole thing's moving back and forth like that so i'm gonna try not to do that and i'm sorry um i rock i don't know when i whenever i talk i have to keep moving if i'm on the phone i'm walking all around if i it's just always been like that uh there's a bittersweet story about my adoption where apparently one of the foster homes i was in i was adopted when i was three and one of the foster homes i was in where it was actually a good situation for a little bit uh they had a rocking horse and my adoptive parents were told that so they got me a rocking horse and apparently i rocked on this rocking horse every night uh till about three o'clock in the morning for a couple of months when i was first with them they could hear me in there rocking and i'd rock myself to sleep so you know there's a background there but anyway uh this i want to talk a little bit about um a thankful heart is good enough a thankful heart is good enough you want to know, am I in the spirit? Am I in the world? Am I in the flesh? Am I following God? Am I doing enough or not doing too much? Or where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? Um, God wants you to lay all that aside. And he's telling you, I believe, a thankful heart is good enough. And uh, a thankful heart is a heart that is enlightened to see what God's done for you in Christ. It comes down to vision, like I said. You know, I remember standing in prayer circles uh, at the it, the Charismatic Church. We used to have prayer meetings that went on for hours. They'd have us circle up, you know. And there's always some sister who wanted to pray, thank you for the rain, and thank you for the weather, and thank you for the flowers, and thank you for the... And it just went on and on and on. And it was so, you wanted her to stop because there was nothing in it and there was no light and no vision. Uh, then a few years later, I met with a group of people that prayed from Ephesians and that was awesome. <laughs> we need to pray based on God's word. And our prayer is just a thanksgiving to him for what he's given us in Christ. Everything has already been furnished. We are walking in an inheritance that has already been given to us. And, you know, Hebrews talks about the death of the testator. There is a testament. There is a will that has been bequeathed to us. And the death of the death, the reason you get your inheritance is because the testator died. The one who wrote it. And he is resurrected, but he died. And that secured our right to everything all the promises of god are yes and amen in christ and we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in in uh in the heavens in christ you know and he's in our spirit and we have him and as we recognize what god has done for us and we stop just praying lord we we don't see him just as the god of creation we don't see him as just the god of redemption we see him as the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that was a huge thing for Paul to say because it speaks of the sonship and the inheritance and our glorious destiny, the Father of glory. And, you know, we need a vision of a high vision of our salvation that's not just about sin. It's not just about you got forgiven it's about like i said the ages to come when which he's going to show you there's leaves in my hair the exceeding riches of his grace in his loving kindness towards you in christ and he's enthroned you for that purpose and so your prayer of thanksgiving should be filled with oh thank you lord that when i was crucified that i was i was crucified with christ i was dead in sin and you'd given up on that and now you've made me alive together with him and you've seated me in the heavenlies in Christ. And you have enthroned me with him and have promised that I would 
reign with him it, for a thousand years and unto eternity. And you've made me a member of the household of God. And you've made me a temple of the living God. And you've given me your spirit and regenerated me and made me a son of God. And now it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Oh, thank you, Lord. You know, that, let that be your prayer. If you have that kind of thanksgiving, based on the recognition of what God's done for you in Christ, you got everything you need. That's what God wants to tell you is a thankful heart is good enough. You don't need to pursue this. You don't need to pursue that. You don't need to sweat this or sweat that or worry about this or change that. God has sovereignly arranged all of your circumstances he has set you before or behind he knows you're standing up and you're sitting down he knows your thoughts before you think them he set his hand upon you and he has even more for the sons of god i mean that was david's day but for the sons of god there's even more going on because he is ordering everything in your environment now that everything has been subject to christ and he's been made head over all things to the church he by his power is subjecting everything to christ in your life so that his resurrection power is controlling everything that enters your life and the only thing you need to do is recognize it and be thankful. That's all he's asking you to do. He's not asking you to play in the future or go figure this out or figure out whether you're in the will of God. No, you are in the will of God. You are under his sovereign hand. And every single thing in your situation has been graciously provided for you, either as a blessing or a discipline, you know, to... Uh, and, and so then the other, t the other thing is... There's a book that I recommend by Luce Bear Schaefer called the, He That Is Spiritual. And he says the spiritual man is the one who understands the mystery of Christ. And that's from 1 Corinthians, where the natural man can't receive the things of the spirit. Uh, they're spiritually discerned. But we understand God's wisdom in a mystery because the spirit searches out the depths of God and reveals to us the mystery. And that mystery is the mystery of Christ, which was predestined for our glory. And that's related to Christ in you and all the riches of what he is in you. That is our discovery. That is what God has given us um, to explore. Uh, so he says a spiritual man is one whose focus is on these truths that are not even discernible to a natural or a soulish man. A soulish man can be saved. He just can't understand the things of the spirit. He just can't get into the Christ as life aspect of the Christian life. He th sees everything in terms of his own works. Uh, and that's different than a Judaizer who's trying to bring you into bondage. This is just someone who themselves is under bondage and they need travail until Christ is formed in them. And then they can be focused back on the sonship and the riches of Christ that are theirs. But um, the other thing he said is, so that's the spiritual man. We are focused on a body of truth, the Pauline revelation. He said there are two things to avoid. Everything is pretty simple, but there's just two things to avoid, grieving the spirit and quenching the spirit. So we trust that everything is in God's hand and he has provided everything. And we acknowledge as we grow in the knowledge of Christ, our heart is filled with thanksgiving. And God says that's good enough. But then, and he brings things into your environment and controls everything related to your environment. If you would have just acknowledged that, you wouldn't worry about tomorrow as much. <laughs> and so we start by acknowledging that. And then when something comes into our environment that is not according to God or that he wants to, he still allowed it, right? But you get something inside of you that you discern, okay, this person, I don't want to get involved with them. They're, they got an agenda or they're, I, I should not. Something in my spirit tells me no. My discernment says no. My wisdom and my understanding says no. Okay. Now that is for you to rejoice in the Lord and say no and that he's pleased with that. But if you say yes when your spirit says no, now you have an opportunity to grieve or quench the spirit. And now you lose in that moment when you quench the spirit and you know what does it take to quench the spirit I'm not, I'm not setting a fast rule i'm just saying that this is kind of how it works that he will then have to discipline you and bring you back into the fellowship because when you quench the spirit you quench your sense of blessing and the quench thanksgiving and the quench everything in your 
heart that was full of acknowledgement of what God had done for you in Christ, and now you're focused on you and your circumstances, which will bring you into the flesh, which will bring you into sin, which will bring you into condemnation, and then he'll need to use the gospel to bring you back, you know. And you may never even realize that it was because you quenched the Spirit, <laughs> Uh, or grieve the spirit, you know. So that's where, you know, we take care of offenses and we take things, care of things that pass through our heart that get our eyes off Christ. And the minute we turn back to the Lord, everything's okay. Remember in the Old Testament, the temple, you know, Solomon's prayer about the temple is any, no matter where they are, if they turn towards the temple, no matter how bad they are and how far they've cast themselves away from God's presence and walked in sin and rebellion or in chains because of it, all they had to do is turn to the temple and pray in faith, and God will send them rescue and deliver them. Same with us, but even more immediate. We can be in in darkness in one minute and come right into the light as soon as we acknowledge what the Holy Spirit's trying to point to. And that's just for our growth. He allows those things for our growth, not to become a better person, but to know Christ and his grace more, and to have a more refined discernment, more mature wisdom and understanding and so that we can as we go through the situations that god has sovereignly ordained for us we walk in a more mature way and we react to things differently and more in harmony with him because we've learned by experience that's all that's about um but yeah god just wants you to be thankful that's it if you are thankful you're in the flow if you are thankful to the lord right now not because the flowers and the i mean that's good too but no thankful based on the body of truth that's been revealed in the word there is a digging in the word revealing christ and your position in him and what he is to you those are heavenly things spiritual blessings you get your heart on that and your heart is full of that you are in the spirit and you are in the flow and you are sanctified if you want to call it that you will find that temptation does not appeal to you the way it did in the past temptation will rise from your flesh but It'll be easy to say no if your heart is full of thanksgiving. So this is a weapon, really. It's uh, like the praise army that goes before the real army. Um, but you don't have to be all hysterical about it. You can just have a heart full of thanksgiving, and that is good enough. A heart full of thanksgiving is at peace and rest. All right, take care.